Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. I often get questions about whether or not you need Windows Server Cals with some of the other Microsoft products that have Cals themselves, such as Exchange and RDS. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the relationship between Windows Server Cals and some of those other products. So before I dive into the discussion about Windows Server Cals and Cals for other products and such, I want to make it very clear that I am not an expert in Microsoft licensing. Uh, um, I'm not sure if there is any one single person on the planet that knows everything that there is that there needs to be known about Microsoft licensing, but I am going to try to present the information as I understand it. And also take note that this video is being made in January of 2023. And it is entirely possible if you're watching this in the future, that licensing has changed for Microsoft. It doesn't change a whole lot, but there are tweaks that, that happen um, here and there. So kind of take this video as maybe a guide of basic understanding and maybe where to start with your your own journey toward figuring out cows and such for microsoft licensing also note that um, this video is not going to be like an in-depth discussion of insert you know scenario here that has some particular um, some particular set of computers or users that you're wanting to try to license this is just general information to understand the relationship of windows server cows and cows of other products so with that let's dive right in so before i dive deep into the question i want to explain what a cal is briefly cal stands for client access license and it is the license to allow users and or devices to be able to use whatever Microsoft product has cows. Not all Microsoft products do, but most use the server plus cow model, which is by the product and then by the licenses necessary to legally allow whatever users and or devices to be able to access the, the, the product. I'll put a link in the description to a video I did a while back explaining in a little bit more detail what Windows Server Cals are, which are the, the focus for this video as well. So when I'm thinking about the question of do you need a cow or rather do you need a Windows Server Cal when you're dealing with other products? I like to think of the license as kind of like a pyramid. And at the base we have here the Windows Server itself. So if you were to use Windows Server and you want to legally have things be able to touch Windows Server, whether that's users identifying or users authenticating with Active Directory or you're running DHCP and there's computers that are getting um, DHCP addresses or you're running DNS or file server and such, the Windows Server model is Windows Server plus Cal. And that cow can either be user cow or um, device cows. Again, I go into the video in the, in the description about user and device cows. But just have that in your head that in order to use Windows Server itself, you need to have server plus cows. Now, there are some products that have a licensing cow model themselves. And an example of this is Exchange. So let's say that you're wanting to run on-premises Exchange. And you're obviously going to be running that on a Windows Server. So to figure out if you need Windows Server Cals, the answer is yes, you have Windows Server, which is license plus Cal, and then you buy your product of Exchange. But Exchange also has a Cal model. So if you want to be able to have users accessing Exchange, then you're going to have Exchange Server Cals. Now, before I get you know, flamed in the comments about this, I know there there is some... Um, there's some other details regarding exchange server cows, such as like external users and whether or not that they, they need a cow. That's, that's beyond the, the scope of this video. And again, I, I think I mentioned it before that I'm not the be all end all knowledge of cows. This is just kind of like a standard situation to, to think through for cows. But generally, if you are running on premises exchange, you're going to need to have cows for that either. I think they have standard and enterprise cows and I think, I'm not sure if there's user and device cows with exchange. I have not had the license on premises exchange before, so I don't know all the, the details of it, but I do know on the basic level, you need to have the cows. So if you look at our little pyramid here, we have the base of Windows Server. Windows Server has to have a cow. Then we have the exchange product and the exchange product has a cow. This is fairly straightforward. I know Microsoft licensing often gets the um, reputation of being confusing, and it is. But as far as like the do you need a cow, at least in my experience with the, the, the small to medium business size of stuff, the answer of you need a cow seems fairly straightforward to me. Now, the question that I get all the time refers to RDS or remote desktop services. 
this, this one's kind of strange. So let's take a look again at our base. So RDS is a feature of Windows Server. It is not a separate software that, that you're going to buy. It's, you know, if you go to add features in your server manager, you can just add RDS or remote desktop services with that. But remote desktop services has a Cal requirement. And you can find that if you were to look up any of the Microsoft documentation on licensing RDS, you'll see that it talks about CALs. These CALs are different from Windows Server CALs. So again, we have our base of Windows Server plus the CAL requirement for just Windows Server. And then if you use RDS, you're going to have an RDS CAL, either user or device CALs for that. Now there is um, VDI, uh, virtual desktop infrastructure. It has its own Cal requirement. And again, that's outside the scope. But the, the thing I wanted to hammer home was the fact that when you're working with RDS or other Microsoft products that have a Cal requirement, you're going to have Windows Server and the Windows Server Cal requirement just to use Windows Server itself. Then the product on top of it if it has a cow requirement, you will need to, to have the appropriate cows to cover your users and devices and such. So I hope that clears up some confusion about the relationship between Windows Server cows and then the cows that are available or rather that are necessary for other Microsoft products. Now I have not dealt with the enterprise level uh, agreements with Microsoft. There may be some, some other, other deals with that. I've only dealt with the small and medium sized business licenses and that's pretty much how it is. I also haven't talked about um, any of the Microsoft 365 stuff and Exchange Online and how licenses work if you're in a hybrid environment. That's you know beyond the scope. But the general idea is for you know on-premises Windows Server, you have your Windows Server Cal. You're going to have to have that, and then you have your products on top of it. So if you found this video um, useful or you just enjoyed the video, make sure you do click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do click the subscribe button and ring the bell. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.